This morning, I want to give a brief update on our New Orleans church plant. We'll find out if uh, technology is going to cooperate with me. There it is. Um, Let me just start by saying thank you so much for your ongoing prayer and the support of this church. I mean, I, I say that every time I get up here and get to talk about New Orleans specifically, but it's, uh, it's warranted because we are being sent so well. Uh, your prayers are effective, and I, my family, the team, we felt those uh, prayers and your care as well throughout this whole time. Uh, I'm going to mention a few more things that you can be praying for as I uh, give this update. A couple weeks ago, as uh, many of you know, James Cheney and I, we uh, drove a 26-foot U-Haul with a 12-foot trailer on the back of it with all of our possessions to New Orleans. Um, We went through Dallas, which was really important because uh, in Dallas, I got to pick up a a custom-made pulpit. Um, I'll show you a little bit about that. We're going to be meeting uh, on the move. We won't have our own building. And so something that was portable was really important. A man named Randy Buster uh, purchased this pulpit and a church that's uh, decided to partner with us, Cornerstone Bible Church in Katy, Texas. Uh, Darren Roberts, some of you know Darren. He's the the pastor there. And uh, they have taken our church plant on as domestic missionaries. And so they are supporting us for our first year at least. Um, I'll actually be speaking at their missions conference at the end of this month and uh, Finisterre. Uh, Scott and some of the folks with Finisterre will actually be at that same conference. And so you can be praying for me, praying for us. Uh, It's really exciting to have uh, them backing us and they're close uh, about five and a half to six hours away. So it'll be a a great partnership to have them as well. Um, This pulpit, just to tell you a little bit briefly about it, uh, this packs up, folds up into uh, what you're looking at there on the left. This is us in New Orleans. This was the first thing to come out of the trailer. I was really excited to show my wife and D-Rob. So... Uh, it unfolds there on the top that you saw me holding is Keruksan Tan Lagan. That's Greek meaning preach the word from 2 Timothy 4.2. And so this uh, folds all the way out and is just a, a fully functioning sacred desk, as they call it. Just to remind you, uh, we're planting in New Orleans East. That's a map of New Orleans. You have Lake Pontchartrain is the big body of water there uh, with the city underneath it. And that highlighted portion is New Orleans East. That's where we're planting. And uh, thankfully, we actually found a place to meet. Uh, Nick Dudley reached out to all all of the schools and was even investigating commercial property as a suitable place for us to gather. And the one place to to really uh, get back to him that was a viable option turned out to be the high school that I graduated from. Yeah, so God has uh, a sense of humor. (laughs) Um, That's that's where we're going to be meeting. They had already, by the time they uh, made that call back to us, talked to multiple people involved in in that decision, um, talked about what they would need to host us, have already discussed uh, getting new equipment in their gymnasium to accommodate us well if we would be meeting there. So it's really uh, off to a great start in terms of a relationship with them. Uh, And we got to tour that facility uh, last couple weeks when we were were there. Uh, Abramson Psy Academy is is the new name. And so in... 
in just being there on campus for a couple hours, uh, it just seems to be a really open door for the gospel. Uh, got to meet coaches and staff, faculty, uh, even some students, uh, some, a couple young men that I exchanged numbers with and texted with in the, the days following. One of them is saying, hey, I want to come to your church. My brother wants to come too, you know. Uh, so we'll see how those things turn out, but it really does seem to be a, an open door for the gospel, and, and we're pretty excited about that. Um, on that trip, uh, and I've, I've already talked to some of you, we've, we hit a few hiccups in closing on our house. The Robinsons have closed on a house in the east. We hit a, a few hiccups, and we're still not closed, but we were able to uh, arrange a pre-occupancy agreement, move all of our stuff in, and uh, that's, that's something. <laughs> it's progress. So we're, uh, we're still waiting. You can be praying that tomorrow we would actually be able uh, to close, and that would help us cut down on, on now ever-growing closing costs. Uh, and just so you know, the house that we're, we're planning to close on and the Robinsons are those two properties in New Orleans East. So we're in the same neighborhood, uh, five doors away, and in the two days that we were at the house uh, looking at the property, it was our first time seeing it uh, in person, and then moving things in, we actually met more neighbors in those two days than uh, we did in the three years that we lived in Awatuki. <laughs> I attribute that to two things. One, just culture. The culture is different there, and so people are out and about, uh, close-knit community, people hang out outside, unlike in Arizona. And so we're talking to our neighbors, meeting them. People are driving by, stopping, talking, wanting to meet us. And so that was just a, a unique blessing. That's, that's one reason, just culturally. But secondly, I, it, it just seems that the Lord is paving the way for us to, to get to know people and to be in front of people, to tell them why we're actually there. Um, and I've already been told you lost your New Orleans accent. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're eager to be, to be there and to keep meeting folks and to start building those relationships. You can be praying for that as well. The, the, the proximity of this neighborhood in New Orleans East to the school where we're going to meet is a 20-minute walk. Yep, it's a 20-minute walk, a four-minute drive, and so that just opens up lots of uh, potential opportunities to host and to draw in people uh, to our lives from the school where we're going to be meeting. And so just, again, would love for your prayers uh, in that regard that God would just make those relationships easy and often and um, an availability uh, into our lives for, for people in that community. If you want to keep up with updates, you can sign up on, on the website. Uh, this is the Grace Bible NOLA website. GraceBibleNOLA.org is where you can find that. Uh, Sam Pagel, thankfully, has, has now outfitted the website to host my sermons. And so what I'm preaching currently is going up on the website. Some of... Uh, my former series that I've preached here are also up there just so that people, if they, if they look in, they can uh, get a, a flavor of what's coming. And uh, the, the future sermons as well will be hosted here. Um, my expectation is to begin in Psalm 119 on the second Sunday. So November 12th is when we launch. I'll preach an, an introductory a sermon from 1 Timothy 3:15 on what the church is, what we're there to do, and then we'll jump into Psalm 119, which will take us a little bit to get through. Um, you can also keep up with those sermons on the Grace or the GBC NOLA Sermon Podcast if you just want those uh, automatically downloaded to your device wherever you listen to podcasts. So. Thank you again for, for your prayers, your support, your encouragements along the way. We're, we're eager to see what God does.